In this lesson, we'll learn how we can add pivot points to the various joints of our cartoon duck. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now that we have our hierarchy arrangements in place over here in the layers section of our timeline view, we can now begin adding pivot points to all the major joints of our cartoon duck. So again, we have this duck that we've designed and created, breaking him up into separate pieces. We now want to be able to move these individual body parts around their respective joints, and placing pivots will allow us to do that. The pivot tool is really one way of allowing us to achieve this here in Toon Boom Harmony, as well as Animate and Animate Pro. So with that said, let's go ahead and switch to our drawing view. We'll just click on one of our body parts here, and let's just zoom in a little bit here. And so to add a pivot, you can come over here to your toolbar and click on this button right here. It drops the pivot right here on the drawing view canvas. So let's place all of our pivots in their respective areas first, and then we'll demonstrate how these different parts can basically be moved now. So I'm going to go ahead and place my first pivot right there just by clicking on the base of that body shape. I think that would be an appropriate place to put that pivot. We'll go ahead now and place a pivot for the head. So I want the head and all of its facial attributes to rotate around this part of the neck, which I have designed to be extended up and hidden behind the head. So we'll place that pivot right there. Now, mind you, that pivot's not attached to the neck, but the head layer. We'll go ahead now and tackle the appendages of the body. So basically clicking on each one of these different layers that makes up a different body part. And if you want to zoom in, you can to really kind of place that pivot exactly where you want it to be. Okay. We'll go ahead and do the opposite leg here. So you can see how quickly and easily we can basically drop in uh, these different joints here. And we can always come back and adjust them at any time, especially once we start moving around these different um, body parts if they're not looking right. We'll go ahead, go ahead now and uh, tackle the arms as well. I want that upper arm to rotate right around there at the shoulder area. And then I want to go ahead and make sure I get this pivot just right for the lower arm where it meets the upper arm. And then, of course, the hand as well. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and finish out with that opposite arm, arm number one. We'll go ahead and expand that there in our layers section. And then a pivot for the hand. Okay, excellent. Let's go ahead and zoom out here. And let's switch to our camera view just so we kind of see all this in a more composited view um, as we start to demonstrate how these different body parts can move. Okay? So basically, we can click on any one of our layers in here. We're going to use our transform tool. And so since I clicked on upper arm two, it's selecting everything because, again, we have that hierarchy arrangement. So I can come down here to the corner of the selection in any corner, and we're given the option to rotate. You can see how that whole entire arm is rotating in front of the legs, mind you, because in the previous lesson, if you recall, we adjusted the Z depth. So if at this point you're still running into any body parts that are rotating behind another and it looks funky, Jump back into your data view and kind of see if you can adjust that Z depth at all. Okay. And let's go ahead and kind of demonstrate how that forearm also rotates. So I'm going to rotate that over a little bit. And then let's go ahead and kind of see how that looks. And so you can see just how nice and clean that looks as a form right there. The upper arm and the forearm don't feel like separate pieces. And that's thanks to that invisible line that we added when we were drawing our line work for the different pieces that make up not only the arms, but also the legs as well. So we can demonstrate that on one of our legs here. So again, we can kind of rotate. And again, we can see that nice seamless form right there that we get where we have the line work basically coming around the perimeter of the upper and lower legs, and we don't have anything being cut off right there with an additional line. So again, just the, the really amazing tools that we have and the features we have here in Toon Boom allow us to do this. So really cool stuff. And we can also see how the head rotates as well. Again, I extended that neck upward so that when we do rotate the head, we don't have any missing information right there with the head. Let's finish out by talking about that drawing substitution that we created for that 
hand two, okay? So we can rotate the hand as it is right now because we have that pivot in place. However, if we come to our library view and we switch out with that drawing substitution that we created and then try to rotate that hand, you can see that we didn't get the pivot set for that hand, okay? Now, what you could do is place this pivot on that new drawing substitution, right? But you may not get it exactly the same as you have for your other hand drawing, okay? So just switching in between those two, the pivot may not be perfectly consistent. So what you can do is go to your initial hand drawing, right click on the cell, go to copy cells from timeline, switch to that drawing substitution, right click on that cell again, go to paste special, you're given a paste special dialog box, and you want to click on update drawing pivot and click OK. So now that pivot will always be consistent um, institutions um, when you're in here animating and you have multiple cells um, here in your timeline section of your timeline view. So basically that is our course on designing our cartoon duck character. We basically started off with a sketch, kind of visualizing our character, and as we moved forward we broke it down into pieces along the way. First creating those individual pieces on different layers just with the line work and then adding our color um, later on on a separate mode for each one of those layers. So again, I just want to mention as I did earlier in the course that that's really just one way of breaking down a character for this type of animation. Some people feel more comfortable in sketching out their character, applying their line work all on one layer with their color, and then going in and breaking it up afterwards, cutting it apart, and then placing it on separate layers. So this is by no means the be-all, end-all way to break up a character. So I hope you've enjoyed this course and you're able to take a lot of these different, um, these different features and tools that we've talked about and use them effectively and accurately on your own character design projects, whether it's in Toon Boom Animate, Animate Pro, or here in Harmony. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.